Mr. Secretary, do you believe that our military is a fundamentally racist organization? Yes or no, please. Well, I won't give you a yes or no answer on that, Senator, because uh, it, it deserves more than a yes or no. Uh, the military, like any organization, will have its challenges, but I do not believe it is a fundamentally racist organization. Thank you. We, I, I'm, we sorry will... to cut you, I'm sorry to cut you off, but our time is limited. I think it is a pretty simple question. I'm glad that you agree it is not fundamentally racist. Do you believe that any member of the military should be treated differently based on their skin color and sex? Again, yes or no will do. Again, this question deserves more than a yes or no answer. Uh, but, it is Mr. Secretary, I'm sorry to cut you off. Our time is limited. It is a very simple question. Should a member of the organization you lead be treated differently, in violation of the Constitution, I would add, based on their sex or the color of their skin? No, I do not believe that. And that is, the, Thank, that is okay. why we have diversity, equity, and inclusion focus in the military. It's, and the military, for decades, has been one of the institutions in the society where you are most likely to get ahead based on your own performance, on your own merit, irrespective of the color of your sin, skin or where you came from or who your parents were. Sir, I Mr. absolutely Secretary, agree with that, and I am, I am an example of that. You're, you're but, but I would also, I would also say that— Mr. Secretary, that, Mr. Secretary, your career is an excellent example of that. But I have more questions based on the reports we've seen. The military has included the works of critical race theories on its reading list by authors like Ibrahim Henry Rogers, who now calls himself Ibrahim Kendi, and Robin D'Angelo. Mr. Kendi has written, quote, the only remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. The only remedy to present discrimination is future discrimination, end quote. Do you agree with that proposition? I, I've not read that, and I, I don't, you know, I certainly don't agree with what you just said, but I, okay. you know, Ms. Mr. Secretary, it, it's always important to have the con full context of anything that's, uh, that you're being asked to evaluate. Mr. Secretary, do you believe that race and sex should be the key factor when selecting combat leaders, rather than, say, operational excellence, technical proficiency, leadership, agility, and integrity? I, I do not, uh, Senator. I, I think what you just said should be key components in making any, any selection. Thank, thank you. I'm glad we agree on all this. So let me just wrap up by saying this. If, if troops are subjected to the kinds of trainings drawing on critical race concepts like America and our military is inherently racist, or certain races are inherently privileged, other races are inherently victimized, given what you've said, should they report it up their chain of command or to the inspector general or to other appropriate channels? They've always had, yes, they should. They've always had that ability to Thank do that, and I would recommend that in the future. I would also say that diversity, equity, and inclusion is important to this military now, and it will be important in the future. 